In this video, I am going to discuss the reasons that most black people don't have money. And to illustrate why racism isn't the problem, look at my thumbnail. That's A.G. Gaston, who was worth a hundred and thirty million at the time of his death. A.G. Gaston, who lived to be 104. A.G. Gaston, who built his multiple millions of dollars during the worst racism in American history. He became a millionaire when black men were being lynched. He became a millionaire when Martin Luther King was put in jail and H.G. E. Gaston is the one that provided the funds to bail him out. So racism is not going to stop you from building wealth and getting money. So we're going to discuss what the reasons are. So the first reason is black culture. I've talked about this many times. I get a lot of pushback. You know, we just do what we're doing. Black culture is the antithesis of wealth development. Black culture is not about building wealth. Give you an example. Black culture, like take O'Shea Duke Jackson. For many years, he's tried to align his channel with productive black people causes. It didn't go anywhere, but when he created the Celebrity Junk, a gossipy type YouTube format, his channel started to explode. Black people, and once I say this, I'm not talking about all black people. There, there's a group of black folks, which we will talk about, that are about building businesses, that are about getting money, and they are about generational wealth. But black culture is one of the biggest barriers to wealth development. Now, number two, generational poverty. For you to get money, you must be in close proximity. I've talked about this. If you go ahead and get the cheap rent, you are designating your children to have friends who are also living in the cheap rent zip code. So what happens is you have a commingling of folks who can't do anything for each other. This creates generational poverty. This creates generational low income. And this is where so many black folks want to be in the low rent discount. I remember when I moved out here to Sandy Springs and I told a friend what my rent was because I was living in an apartment at the time. Good Lord. That's a lot of money. You can move to East Point and pay half of that. The cheap rent philosophy. It is not good. It is, I understand that times are hard. I'm not talking to you if you lost your job and you've been laid off. I am talking about a cheap rent mindset. It is cheap, it is corrosive, and this is one of the another reasons that black people don't have any money because they're living in the cheap rent zone. And then once you live in an area that is normal cheap rent and then the gay boys move in and the white folks move in and property prices start going up, you get mad because you're being forced out of the cheap rent zip code. Another reason that black folks don't have any money. It is the appearance of being white. I have seen this over YouTube. I have seen this in real life. Black people, once again, the black folks like Byron Allen, who, who owns the Weather Channel, typically they do not mate well with other black women, men and women. And this goes for black women, like black women from California are radically different than black women down here in South. And typically when you have a black person that has these mores, that has this attitude, they're going to find it very hard to socialize with other black folks because of the black culture. One of this is hands down, probably one of the biggest reasons that black folks don't have money. 
black folks will go to extreme lengths to avoid appearing white, adapting what's called white attributes. Um, but here's the thing. They're not white attributes. They're success attributes. And any culture that adopts these attributes will be successful. But black folks are caught up on, I don't want to appear to be white. When I was little, I have a speech impediment. I had to go to special ed for six years in a row. And because of my speech impediment and you know, going over, flipping over the flashcards and doing this, I wasn't allowed to use slang. Even then, it started like, why do you speak differently? How come you don't sound like us? That black culture issue is problematic when it comes up to developing wealth. Because see, money don't care who make it. Money does not care. Money is not racist. Money's like, if you do these things, do point A, B, C, D, E, bam, you get money. But black folks don't want to be part of that. Now I'm about to get off into some other reasons. Black folks don't want to take opportunity. Really? Right now I have a free course that is guaranteed if you do the course, you will make money. It is free, it's 100% free. And I've got some people who are taking me up on the offer, some people who are doing it, but most not doing it, not doing it. And to go to uh, even extreme, many years ago, I was giving literally everything away for free and 95% of the people did not crack open the course. 95% because see, part of black culture is, it's gotta be sexy. It's gotta be hot. It's gotta have swag. It's gotta be popping. You know, look at the black YouTube channels that do well on YouTube. They're about pranks, they're about relationships, tall guy reviews. It's nothing about stunning. I got a McLaren, I got a Hellcat, Omni. Like right now, there are so many people who love this guy because he was just literally going around and spending an outrageous amount of money. It's like, damn, I'm gonna buy a new Ferrari, I'm gonna pay cash for it. Channel blew up. Now for here, for, you know, for years, because once again, I'm not talking about business stuff on this channel anymore. Um, for years, I have 10 years, I've been talking about how to start a business, how to start a corporation, how to get money. Did not grow like Omni and the Hellcat, which was a stunt channel. And Omni would give you these feel good platitudes. You know, he seems like a nice guy, but he would not tell you from point A to point B to point C how to make money. He never said how he made money. He just talked around it because he knew that he was treading in a gray area. But Omni, Tall Guy Reviews, uh, CC, so cool. This is a young guy. You know, he has his family. It's a family YouTube channel, but he lives in the mansion. He bought himself a brand new Rolls Royce for his birthday. These are the type of black content that explodes because it's sexy, it's hot, it's happening, it's now. And if you want to be successful, you're gonna have to let that go. This is one of the biggest issues that black folks have with not having any money, is that you must be entertained to be educated. And if you're not being entertained, because Alex Becker, who's not black, but he led the path, that if you go ahead and get you a Ferrari or a Lambo, people will watch your YouTube channel. If you know you're like Erica Williams driving around in a Fiesta, people keep asking her, why won't you get you a new car? She is not getting the views. She's not getting the support from most of the black community because she's not flashy, but she's slowly and steadily building up her business. These are the reasons Kevin Samuels, he puts out a lot of information. He, he point blank gets into it with mostly black men about the things you have to do to be successful and they will fight with him. They will fight with him because of black culture. 
Also, from my experience, this is another reason, and this is mostly men, black men care more about trim than success. Yes, I said it. You know, I saw this with disruptive mail. At one point, I was selling way more disruptive mail courses, which were about how to get with women, how to. I was like, good Lord, I wish I had charged more. They were spending more money than business courses to put more money in your pocket. This is a truism. Look at the number of MGTO red pill hate channels and look at the number of simp channels. There's this one OG Dre. He does all of these videos where a woman comes on and she looks good and he just, he just cuts up. This is a problem. Is in my video when men care more about trim than making money. This is a huge, huge, huge problem. Because once again, it ain't racism. Because everyone wants to go ahead and say racism, racism, racism. It ain't racism. A.G. Gaston, who became, had a net worth of $130 million during the worst racist period in American history. Didn't stop him from getting money. So it ain't racism. It's attitude in its habits and a lot of black people have some really bad habits. One of the bad habits is we need someone to work on us on generational wealth. People will look at Michael Jordan and get mad at Michael Jordan because see someone else is supposed to do it. I myself are not supposed to participate in this game. Michael Jordan, he got money. He needs to contribute to the black community. This is another reason that black people don't have money sitting on their hands, waiting on someone else to do it, waiting on someone else to make the moves, waiting on someone else to build it, waiting on someone else to create the change. I ain't going to do it. I'm waiting on Michael Jordan. I'm going to wait on all these other athletes. These, you know, here, here's the thing. If you were to take all of the rappers, all of the athletes, I'm talking about NBA, NFL. We're talking about less than 10,000 men on the planet. And the black community has put so much weight on these 10,000 dudes. You know, a community of about 45 million people has put so much on this and so much pressure on such a small group of high profile, highly visible men. It's not right. You need to get up, get out, be like A.G. Gaston, go out, start something, put something together. Because, you know, like I've had many people push back over the years on this channel, because when I start saying it ain't about racism, it's like, well, you know, the government and all this other stuff has done this. And there have been people who've been systematically screwed due to racism. But as A.G. Gaston has proven, as Madam C.J. Walker has proven that you can get rich in a racist environment. And also, America has less racism. I'm not about to say that all our problems are solved because they're not. But America has less racism than it did for Madam C.J. Walker. Less racism, racism when A.G. Gaston was doing his thing. Less racism. It's less racist. Right now, white people are so tame but once again you're going to have all of these excuses and all of these reasons and you're going to have people who are going to cling to black culture and i'm going to get called coon and all this other stuff because i dare to say this but embracing black hood ghetto culture will keep you poor it will because it ain't about making money. It ain't about building legacy. It's not about building a generational wealth. It's about being sexy, cool, having that swag. Also, another reason that black people don't have money. Black women will choose a man who has swag, sexiness, game, over a solid, well-paid lame. Oh, black women, I ain't letting y'all off the hook because like the black men, they put trim before money. Y'all put all this other stuff. You put swag, you put sexiness, you put height, 
And there are many, many, many good, solid, well-paid men that y'all ignore because he's not black enough. He's a little lame. He's an educated lame. I hate that terminology because this is what the black folks who embrace and celebrate black hood culture call men who are in the position to become successful. Educated lame. Oh, you know, he, you know, or as Chris Rock said in the, oh, he's the type of black dude that's going to date a white girl. You, you, you hear all of these things and all of these conflicts and all of this cultural dysfunction. And you wonder why black folks don't have money. Now, I will say there is a, an emerging classification of black folks who are defying the norm. They're becoming Republicans. They're showing up to Republican meetings. They're getting money. They're building businesses. And they're ignoring the black politic body about black culture because we we got to keep it black. I dated this chick who was from New York and she had a degree. She was a teacher, but she was an educated hood rat. Did we just, you know, once she started to look up to me and started to move my way, we got along. But once the hood, you know, she belonged to the streets. Once the hood started calling her and she went back to that hood life, went back to hood ethics, hood politics, hood customs, we fell apart. See, I am not from the streets. I don't know nothing about the streets. I don't know nothing about prison. Another reason that black folks don't have money is a person who committed an illegal act, went to jail, gets more recognition for getting out of jail than someone who got the MBA. Craziest thing I've ever seen. Like, oh yeah, he was, he, he, he came home. He was away for a while and they're going to throw a party for this dude, celebrate him, dap him up. Hey man, I got my MBA. Oh, you educated lame you. See black culture doesn't celebrate the attributes of success. Now, Nigerian culture does. Because if you go to Africa and you look at the most prosper prosperous nations in Africa, they don't embrace the things that black Americans embrace. They just don't. They don't. And this is why black people don't have money. It is not racism. It is culture. It is attitudes, it is habits. And until these things change, which in some sectors, you're starting to see a wave of black men and black women start to embrace the attributes of success and they're ignoring black hood culture because black hood culture is a dysfunctional result of racism. See, this is how it got down. First of all, I'm in the hood and I live here and I got love for the hood and I got pride. So me being from the hood, they ain't nothing wrong with me. They ain't nothing wrong with the way I live. So it's celebrated and held up as an appreciable attribute of life versus the dysfunctional accord that it is. Because like I said, I'm going to get it for this video. I'm going to get it. I'm going to have people like coon sell out and all this other stuff. Cause how dare I say this because Black folks are getting money. There is a group of black folks who have adopted progressive habits and tactics like NFL players who go in the NFL and live on a little bit of money and they bank the rest. These guys are going to be successful. There's this guy who went to Florida State. He played in the NFL for a minute. Now he's a neurosurgeon. You're going to see that there's a wave of black folks who are waking up recognizing what they have to do to be successful. And they're starting to embrace these attributes of success. These attributes of success are not white. They're just that attributes of success, attributes of success. And we're starting to grow as a people because more and more people 
are leaving hood and ghetto culture, which I have talked about badly for many years. I don't use the N word and I take it as an insult when another black person I never met uses that term with me. And I'm, I have to go ahead and like, look, look, don't call me that. And then we get into this thing. It's like, oh, you one of those uppity Negroes. No, I'm just don't like being called out my name like that. This is such a pervasive, corrosive part of black culture that people don't even see it for the dysfunction that it is. You should not be calling. I don't think black folks should be using that word nor white. I don't think anyone should be using it. And I personally don't use it. And I've had some run ins with some friends about the use and terminology of it because it's dysfunctional. It is extremely dysfunctional. But these are the reasons that black folks don't have money. And if you look at the black folks, i.e. A.G. Gaston, i.e. Byron Allen, i.e. Robert Smith, who don't adopt these attributes and go on about their life, they get money. So for many of you to get money, you're going to have to make a cultural shift. And it's going to be tricky. Because what will happen is once you become the person in the family with the money, then the family like this happened with one of my consulting students many years ago. He was in the military. He had fifty thousand dollars in the bank. He had no children. He had no student loan debt. His goal was to get out the military, go home, start a business. And he was well on his way. And then his mother moved in with him and his sister moved in with him. And then he met this chick and got her pregnant and it all fell apart. It all fell apart. And I was just sitting there because I knew the minute that his mother moved in with him, what was going to happen? I knew it. I was like, oh, Lord, because see, this is something else that happens in the black community. The smart, the hardworking are preyed upon by the less smart and hardworking because like Chris Rocky, you know, he even said like when folks hit him up for money, he said, don't even bother me up anymore. Hey, Chris, I need 5,000. I need 10,000. Because he got it and I'm your boy. I'm your girl. You should you should hook me up. You should uh, be there for me. You should be down for me. This is the reasons that black folks don't have money. So if you want to have some money, go below. Get 30 days to 2,500. Get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. Free. It's 100% free. Go ahead and get that. And if you need help, I do have some paid services that will help you start your business enterprise and get a, on the right path for you to be successful. So that's all I got for you guys. Check out this video right here.